Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are here in the Cherokee Batting Range Podcast Studio getting ready to record episode number 207. We're going to continue our discussion of specific defensive training for the different positions. We're going to work on second base today, but before we do that, let's talk about our sponsor, the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats. Use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. And again, make sure you take advantage of that EFP20 discount. It's a great way for you to save that additional 20% and uh, also help support the podcast at the same time. Speaking of supporting the podcast, go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. I want to say thank you very much. Steve Triplett is our newest patron. Steve, we really do appreciate you coming on board. We appreciate and want to say thank you to all of our patrons, all of you that have been supporting us for uh, uh, quite some time now. Um, you've kept the podcast alive, and we certainly do appreciate that, but we'd like more people to come on board. So go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. You can go through the steps, you get signed up. We're talking about 5 10 or $20 a month. And just like any other crowdfunding kind of thing, if a whole lot of you do a little bit, it makes a big, big difference for us uh, moving forward. So Don, We've been working our way around the field. The next position we're going to talk about today is playing second base. Second base is awesome. They've got tons of roles there, Tori. Moment of lapse in that position can be very costly in, a, in an inning or in a game for sure. Right. Well, I've always believed that second base is the cornerstone, key, most important position for team defensive success. I've believed that for a long time. So I always get frustrated when somebody who's a great second baseman is unhappy or frustrated or, yeah. because they're not getting to be the shortstop you know for some reason you know we have this preconceived idea that shortstop is the glamour position of the infield it's where the best players play and all that stuff but I'll be completely absolutely flat out honest if I was looking at the best teams I've ever had the vast majority of times you know sometimes we'd have a great player at both positions sure but the most crucial, most important player was always playing second base, whether it was you know Samantha Lovelady or Christina Dobbs or some of the other greats that have played that position for me over the years. But the best teams always had a great player playing second base, and you touched on why that's so important. There's no position on the field except maybe catcher that's more involved in more different things than second base. Right. So whether it's covering bases on steals, covering bases on bunts, you know, different de- defensive positioning, you know, relays, cutoffs, first and third plays, the old cutoff play for first and third. You know, the second baseman's got a million things to do, and all of them have a potential win or lose game on the line. If I mess this up, we probably are going to struggle to win today. Kind of consequences are, attached to them. Yeah. No, I think that's uh, that's exciting, and you know, like you said, they should should be excited to, uh, you know, get a chance to play that role on right. any team. And it is kind of a, I guess, a thing being the shortstop, right? Right. It's kind of the, the infield captain and things like that. But I think you brought to light a lot of points about, you know, how really critical a good second baseman is. Right. Well, and I think one of the reasons that that uh, preconceived negativity is attached to second base is because it does not require as much arm strength to play second base that at younger ages, because the throw is a little bit shorter, that a lot of players that are perceived to be a little bit weaker are put on the right side of the field, right side of the infield, For the because shorter throws. You know, it's a shorter throw. But the trade-off of that is, as those players continue to develop and the game moves to a higher level, the arm strength of the second baseman is still crucial. We still want to have somebody there that can really throw the ball well. But what we perceive to be different or weaker or less important from a physical perspective, what's going on with a leadership and mental game and understanding and responsibility part makes second base to me such a crucial, crucial position. Reacting to things and things like that. Right. And like you said, the arm strength piece too um, might be a factor when they're very young, but 
as they get older, like you said, the the relay scenarios, the double play. Yeah. I mean, at a fast pace, that has to still be there as well. So yeah, yeah it's not a knock. So the, the reason that we're embarking on this project of talking about each position is that I think what ends up then falling on all of us as coaches is making sure that we're working on stuff in every practice that really allows our players to gain the knowledge and experience that they need to do a good job at each position. And you know, one of the things that we've talked about at second base or really in the infield in, in general is that finding time for those players to work on those specific things is, is, needs to be a high priority. And it can't just be, you know, we're hitting a normal infield routine, you know, you know, everybody gets a ground ball, everybody turns to, everybody does those kinds of things. Because the level of knowledge and expertise that we need the second baseman to have requires a little bit more effort than that, a little bit more time than that. And so, you know, we need to be setting time aside in practice specifically. We need to be doing stuff specifically with the middle infielders working on their different responsibilities. We need to be setting time aside for the people that are going to be playing second base to be covering first on bunts, to be taking throws from all the different people Tori, that are that's going to not, be throwing. That's not easy covering on bunt right. on that side because it's bang, bang. Right. Well, and, and the, the reason that setting time aside and, and isolating those skills is so important is because, as you said, bang, bang, you know, it, it's such an instant decision. And how many times have we watched teams where you can see that – momentary lapse, that little brain hesitation. cramp, that little hesitation, yeah. and all of a sudden nobody's covering first. Or you're there late in collisions, and right. there's all kinds of... And, yeah. and, and so, you know, spending time where we're breaking that out in practice, you know, we, we've talked a lot in, in the Everything Fast Pitch podcast about different practice models and doing things with, you know, the infield shrunk down so that the kids can work on the movement and the thinking faster without having to spend quite so much time running back to their position and stuff like that. We're working on bunt coverages today and we really need to help our second baseman get better at reading the hitter, seeing that she's going to bunt and and because she's reading it faster and seeing the hands and things like that quicker, breaking to cover first base more effectively. We don't even necessarily always need a play to be completed or a ball to actually be bunted every single time for us to work on those different things. And so I think sometimes, you know, really isolating that stuff, shrinking it down, you know, splitting the field in half, whatever it is that you need to do to create the opportunities for that second baseman to really work on those different skills is crucial. And so to me, you know, I think that uh, when we look at the the positions that have a lot of responsibilities, you know, it's on us as coaches to reinforce it consistently and to reward it consistently so that, you know, the players that are involved, you know, it just becomes second nature to them. You know, there, there's no, you know, sort of like in, uh, you know, the Top Gun movie, don't think, just do. Right. So instead of having to think about what you're supposed to be doing, you've done it enough times that it's just a reaction. You just automatically go to the right spot. I was going to say, by then it's too late. Right. right? Yeah. If, if I'm spending a second thinking about where I should be going, by the time I get there in our game, we're in big trouble. In a competitive setting, for sure. Right. Yeah, but being involved in rundowns, they're going to be involved in so much. Right. Like you said, the first and third throws, everything. Right. Well, we, yeah, we, we went through the list a little bit, but so so we've got job number one is just fielding ground balls and being able to throw to the appropriate base. Job number two is coverages, whether it's covering first in a bunt or, or um, second on a steal. It's what your responsibilities are in slap defense. You know, for some teams, slap is treated very much like a bunt where you're just covering for, you know, you're breaking to cover first base. Some situations you're cheating to play to a different position on the field. Sometimes you're, you know, moving way in short, you know, right next to the pitcher, you know, to put more pressure on the slapper bunter so that they don't have as, as easy an angle to make the ball go where they want it to go. So, you know, that, that's three crucial things right there. And then, you know, you touched on it, you know, turning double plays. There's footwork. Yeah, we, if you get there early, if yeah. you get there late, and and different. timing, and yeah. and how to handle the, yourself around the bag, how to turn a double play but not get t-boned by a base runner. We talked a, a little bit about first and third plays. You know, the thing that drives me the craziest watching softball is the number of teams that just let that runner just jog over to second Advance. base like there's nothing. You know, no no value to trying to make a play. You know, if we're going to be running first and third plays and trying to do something to get outs in those situations, our second baseman's going to be really involved in that. Cutoffs, whether it's a play going to second or a play going to third, or you know, in some cases, you know, plays going home, cutoffs and relays. The ball that breaks the perimeter on the right side. Right. Yep. And then we haven't even talked about 
pop up communication, the ball you know that's out behind the first baseman that you have to call her off, that short ball that's behind the pitcher that you have to call her off, you and the shortstop working together on those little pop ups up the middle, you and the right fielder working on those little dinkers and bloopers that are out over your head. So whatever that is in a minute, we've talked about 15 different things that our second baseman has to have time to work on and be drilled on are, consistently enough that they're going to be good at it. Are we covering all those things? Right. right. Yeah. Well, are, are we covering them ever is question number one for our coaches. Cause I'm going to just challenge most of you to be honest with yourselves and how much time, if any, have you spent on you know the things that we've already talked about? Or do and, we expect that they just know it because we talked about it? Right. Or, yeah. or, or, or and have we worked on it enough that there is some sort of comfort? You know, yeah. if, you know, when we talk about you know that second baseman chasing that ball, it's out over her shoulder, heading out towards that right field triangle where she knows she could get crushed by the right fielder coming in for the ball. Have we done that enough times that they are confident and competent and, and comfortable with each other, or are we just hoping that they'll figure it out? Or are we going to, as long as somebody catches it, we don't even care how they do it. The reason we're talking about this from, you know, for, for coach prep is because coaches, it's on us. We got to start to really understand how important it is for us to do a better job of working on all these things. And honestly, you know, just thinking about, you know, the things that we've talked about today, you know, I can remember times when I didn't feel like we worked on some of this stuff enough. And that was in a college setting where we were practicing a lot. There was always something that felt neglected. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, when we start to think about how are we going to do this all in practice, well, we've got to, you know, spend some time splitting stuff up, small groups, combinations of players working on things. You know, maybe you've got, you know, the left side of the infield working on communication and pop-ups and bloopers and all that stuff on one side while the right side's working, you know, together. Then, you know, maybe we split it up in the, you know, the corners are, are working on bunts and the shortstop and second baseman are working on bloopers out there in the Bermuda Triangle between center, short, and second. You know, maybe we have the, you know, second baseman doing the, you know, mini infield, the pygmy infield, and working on her reading the bunt and, and covering first base. But there's lots of ways that we can set it up, but we got to start to think outside the box and make sure that these players are getting enough experience with all these different things. Or we just have to accept the fact that they're going to screw it up a lot and we just got to bite our lip and go, <laughs> okay, the reason our team isn't having the success we want them to have is because we haven't worked on some of this stuff enough. Got to learn it on the fly. Right. Talking about it, drawing it on the whiteboard is a start, but then that has to be followed up with dozens and dozens reps, and dozens of reps. reps and you know opportunities for the players to do it. So. So we've talked about second base. We want to put the, to, to bed the idea that it's a less important position because I'm just going to tell you flat out, to me, it's the most important position on the field from communication, leadership, and, and decision-making. And when you watch really good teams play, I guarantee you they all have a second baseman who really knows how to play that position. No, and it's the, it's exciting to watch. And, and it's a ton of fun. Yep. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. And, and I was spoiled. Back in the day when you know, Samantha Lovelady played second base for me at Tennessee Tech, it got to the point where if something didn't go right, that was the shocker. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she didn't make that play. It was amazing because she was so good at doing all the different things that that job required. And that's a fun place to be as a coach because one, it makes you look like you did a good job and it makes your team play a whole lot better. I love it. All right, so Don, that's going to wrap up 207. Please make sure you support our sponsor, the Anderson Bat Company. Please become a patron if you can. Go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. Also look at the, the fastpitchprep.com website. You can order your square cuts training discs there. You have access to the blogs and the YouTube channel. Tons and tons of information. And as always, make sure you reach out to us with questions, comments, ideas at everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. So for Coach Don McKinley and our producer Stan Lewis, this is Coach Tori saying thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.